Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship for this Sunday, October 2nd. Uh, we are into October. Uh, as the song goes, you can wake me up. September has ended. Uh, it's good to have you along with us this day. The Our discussion today will be on Moses, uh, how he led his people, Israel, from slavery into freedom, and also how we experience freedom, too, in Christ. So that's sort of our theme this day. We're going to get right into the reading. It's a long one. It's from Exodus chapter 14, and it reads as follows. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. The people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may grow, go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord, who is going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud in the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the people of Israel well and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall on, to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. The Egyptians said, Let us free from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walking on dry ground, walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of Egypt, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against Egypt, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you and be with you as you hear his word this day. Make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Growing up in Orchard Park, I grew up in an old house built in the 1890s, but across the street there was a much older house, built in 1809. A little salt box house, not very large, there was an addition to it. Mrs. Loheiser lived there, and her house always smelled like Oreo cookies. For a kid, that is pretty good. And I remember when I was young, she took us up stairs into a bedroom, and in the bedroom there was this little hidden door, little hidden compartment that she opened up and she showed us. It was very, barely big enough for a couple of us kids. And yet she told us that in that little room was sometimes housed a whole family of people. 
How could that be in a little room? Why would anyone hold a little, a whole family of people in a little room in an old house? Well, consider the time that the house was built. 1809. There's someone else in this nation's history born in 1809. You remember from high school civics class? Lincoln, yeah. This house in Orchard Park, New York, was one of the last stops on the Underground Railroad. Right across the street. Here in Fredonia, I know that there's an Underground Railroad stop here and all over this land. But this hymn that we just sang, Go Down Moses, you have to understand a little bit about the, uh, about the context coming out of slavery in this nation. And I got that education good when I was serving in Chicago. Back then, people couldn't read. People were, it was against the law to read. So how do you tell the story of Jesus and the story of the Bible? Through song. Music teachers here know all about that, that we learn very well through song. And these call and response songs in the fields that people would sing would help them do excruciating work. But then we think of Moses. And there was one figure in the United States in the anti-slavery movement. She was known as Moses. Anyone know who? Harriet Tubman, absolutely. And Harriet Tubman, known as Moses, would let her people go, would lead them to freedom. Oftentimes in Canada, in this song, The Promised Land, get to the promised land, go through that underground railroad, and go on to freedom. You hear this from music. And music in celebration. Let my people go, but then on the other side, the horse and rider thrown on into the sea. The song of Moses from Exodus 15, which we spoke as our intro. Freedom. It's something that we all crave. It's something that we all long for. And yet we know so very well that we stand here and sit here as a people captive to so many things these days. Captive to sin, captive to addiction, captive to fear. We're told so often to live in fear. To live in fear of politics, to live in fear of circumstance, of government, of weather, of taxes, of wars and rumors of wars. We are so often a people kept in captivity to fear. What do you fear to say? For some, it may be ill health. You look on your, you look in the mirror and you think of yourself as that 29-year-old guy I still am. And then you look in the mirror and see wrinkles. And in that 80 year old, I, I've heard it said that in every in the body of every 80-year-old man, there's a 25-year-old kid that's saying, What happened? We live in, Bob, Bob, you know nothing about that. You're still in the 20s, right? <laughs> we live in captivity to all these things. And if we look around us, and we see people who are in captivity, who are in bondage, well, oftentimes it's economic, trying their hardest to get ahead, and they just can't trying their hardest to uh, shatter the perceptions about them. How they look, how they dress, how they act, what music they listen to. And they're in bondage. Not to themselves, but to the expectations that people have for them. I always like to say, we're going to be surprised when we get to heaven to see who's there. There are going to be people in heaven who we're looking around and we're thinking, how, uh, how did they get there? How they dress, with how they act, with what they wear, with who they voted for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think so very often that our side is the only right side. That there can't be any good people on the other side. No, 
I'm not taking sides here. That is not the pastor's role. The pastor's role is to simply remind people that there is something greater than politics, something that transcends politics, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that we have a Savior who loves us so much that he bled and died to take away our sin. And the minute we let politics get in front of that, politics get in the way of that, we put up a stumbling block between Jesus and others. For the Christian, that which is temporal, excuse me, those politics, they are nothing compared to that which is eternal. For God is so much greater And that we look around and we see people, perhaps not in slavery as the Israelites were in Egypt, or not as slavery as generations of African Americans, of people of African descent were in this country, and yet we still see people in bondage. Our prayer, Lord, give us eyes to see those who are in bondage. Lord, give us eyes to see those who are enslaved. And Lord, give us the faith like Moses to lead. To lead our people, and that is all people. All people with human flesh and blood to lead them out of that bondage. And into the kingdom of God. But it takes faith. If you look at the civil rights movement in this nation, again, this is a history I learned intimately in my time in Chicago. Leaders were clergymen. Leaders were people of God. The leaders were people who were inspired by the fact that they were set free first from bondage to sin. What do we confess? On our knees every Sunday morning, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. You may remember this formulation. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. It takes something greater than ourselves. It takes someone greater than ourselves. We need a Moses. We need our own Moses to save us from that which binds us. From the fears that bind us from the ideas, the ideologies that bind us. We need a Moses, and his name is Jesus. But what do we know of Moses? Little boy, born, pretty ordinary, except he was a boy born at a time when it was illegal to be born a boy. Pharaoh felt threatened by the Israelites. You have all those little baby boys killed. It happened another time in the Bible, as you know, with Jesus, right? King Herod, all those babies born around Bethlehem, killed off. Except for one. And God saved Jesus just as he saved Moses. Floating him down that basket, down the Nile. You know that story. Even today, uh, little, uh, little uh, baskets for babies in Britain, they're called Moses baskets. saved Moses and spared him that Moses could go about that work of liberating others. What about us? What has God saved you for? We know, and we come to church knowing every single Sunday that we have a God who loved us to the point of sacrifice, who bled and died to take away our sins, but what for? And we can simply go around and live our lives and say, you know, I'm good, I'm saved. I can go live for myself, or I can go and watch the bills this afternoon clobber those Baltimore Ravens. I lived for a year and three months in Baltimore, and I was in Baltimore that moment when Andy Dalton of the Bengals threw that touchdown pass that brought us back to the playoffs after so long. So I'm rooting for Baltimore to lose today and for the bills to win. But sometimes that distraction, those distractions of life are what we're about. Our own music, our own fun, our own thoughts, whatever it may be. What have we been saved for? What did Jesus die for us for? Is that we can simply go along and live our lives? And you know, YOLO? I think something more. I think something greater. What does St. Paul write? For freedom you have been set free. 
You have been set free so that you can set others free. So you can share that life-changing, life-saving gospel message of Jesus Christ with those around you. So you can use those eyes of the Holy Spirit to look for those who are in need, for those who are in want, for those who are in bondage. And like Moses, bring them free, bring them forward, bring them out. Freedom you have been set free. Do not, as St. Paul writes, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Don't go back. Don't go back to those own ways, to those old sins. Don't go back to that old manner of life. Live in Christ. Live as a son or daughter of the king. Sons and daughters of kings are never slaves. They're royalty. And so are you. You are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood. A holy generation. They've been washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives you an extraordinary task. Go out. Proclaim the word. Proclaim the gospel to young and And let people know that there is freedom. I like this hymn that we sang, Go Down Moses. There was, a, there was another song about the Exodus. I remember in uh, Sunday school, uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Are you ever sing that in Sunday school? No? You, okay, okay, maybe you taught that. I can't reach just Sunday school kids, but I like this. Oh, let us all from bondage free, flee, and let us all in Christ be free. You are in Christ. You are free. Free to live, free to love, not just now, but on into eternity for the sake of Jesus Christ. It pours out himself for you, giving you a spiritual food, the body and blood of our Lord in holy communion that nourishes you for the journey. And lets you know that you never walk alone. You're strengthened for an emancipating journey. And you have been brought to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for keeping us safe here in West New York and wherever we may be. We know, Lord, that there are some among us, some of our fellow countrymen, our fellow citizens who have borne the brunt of a hurricane this week. Have mercy upon them where possessions have been lost. Bring them what they need to survive and indeed to thrive. Be with them, guide them as they rebuild their lives, and let them know that they do not do so alone. Send us, Lord, into their lives. We who are of, we who, we who uh, have been given so much, allow us to give of our bounty to serve our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O oh Lord, as we uh, it, it give us the eyes of faith, Lord, to see those around us who are among us who are in bondage, who are in slavery to whatever it may be, be it a, be it a fear or health or politics or ideology, whatever it may be, Lord. Uh, give us the eyes of faith to seek out those who are in bondage and to bring them into freedom, just as you have brought us to freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with our students, both our students in uh, elementary, middle, and high school, our college students away, and the college students across the street at SUNY Fredonia. Allow us, especially for those SUNY kids, uh, allow us to be a light in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. 
and bless you, be with you, and go with you. We'll see you down the line soon now. Bye-bye.